My name is Sri Ram Narayanan. I work for Texas Instruments. And as part of TI, I work in the Kilby Labs. We're chartered to look at technologies that are going to enable our customers over the next decade. And when you look at what kinds of problems our society is going to face in 10 years from now, 15 years from now, the first problem that comes to most people's minds is energy. We are cooling outside air. We live in a house where it's nice and 72 degrees, and outside it could be 30 degrees to 100 degrees. And when we are inside the house, fine, you have the lighting control, and that's working fine. But how do you condition this gradient? How do you go from 100 degrees to 72 degrees, and how do you do it in an effective manner? So you take in outside air, and you cool it or heat it. Well, so if you don't let in the outside air, you would imagine that the HVAC systems would be a lot more efficient. So close all your windows. You have a window, close it. Seal up this building. And people do this nowadays. There's a lot of products that you can buy to sort of seal up windows and doors. Take that to the extreme. Can we build airtight boxes and live inside them? Turns out we can't. And the reason for this is human beings need fresh air. And in commercial buildings, there are actually building codes that state what the level of carbon dioxide as one pollutant can be at the maximum inside a building with reference to what it is outside. So now you're a building manager, you're thinking, how do I make this most efficient? You want to keep the air quality on the, on the inside of the building to the bare minimum requirements. You want to meet health codes while not over-ventilating your space. How do you do this? Well, you want to control this, this inlet of fresh air based on what's going on inside. How do we do that? Well, we're after carbon dioxide. Now, if there is a nice way to just figure out what the carbon dioxide distribution is inside the space, you could go directly after the problem. You could directly attack carbon dioxide. But that comes at a cost. Figuring out the gas concentration in a space is often quite challenging, because gases tend to flow through the space, or inlets and their outlets. And you need this distributed 3D sensing ability which is not that far-fetched, but we're talking five, 10 years from now, are there, is the technology mature enough to deliver on that? Well, we're going to need a lot of different components, a lot of different component sensors. And each of these sensors needs to be accurate and reliable. That is, you place them, and they have to reliably work for 10 years. And based on some of the surveys we've done in marketing uh, research, the carbon dioxide research is, is, is ongoing, but it's not at a point where it can deliver these highly precise, you know, we're talking like 70, 50 ppm accuracy. While they're available in the market, they're not long standing, and there are some technological issues. What else can we do? Think about where this carbon dioxide comes from. It comes from these humans occupying the space. We breathe the carbon dioxide out. You have animals and other things, but primarily it's the human beings. So if we could figure out how many people or in this space, you could somehow estimate what the level of carbon dioxide is and use that as a surrogate to control the, the ventilation, to control your HVAC losses, and ultimately realize energy management. This is the focus of our present research. How do you take these autonomous sensors? When I say autonomous, I mean they're self-powered and energy autonomous nodes, because we don't want to replace batteries in these 10-year lifetime, and, and build up these, these easy-to-deploy systems that can effectively tell you what the occupancy inside a building is. And there are a couple of ways to do this. You could have a decentralized approach or a centralized approach, and where you have many, a handful of sensors in a room or one single sensor. And these are all the topics of current research. And how do you do all this in self-powered manner? And successful completion of this research is going to impact the way our customers control HVAC systems. And that's going to cut back significantly and give us that 20% 15, 20% saving, additional savings in building energies. And we believe that once you go after the building energy, we can ultimately realize the dream of, of a society that is energy self-sufficient and sustainable. Thank you.